Let's spend about 10 minutes talking Kansas State football, basketball, and recruiting on KSO Today, a free daily podcast brought to you by K-State Online. It is Monday, March the 2nd, and this is a new week of KSO Today. I'll get right into this one. I have Derek Young with me today. He stayed in Manhattan over the weekend after watching the K-State KU game on Saturday. And he and I and Flanders are about to leave to head to Colorado to watch a couple of recruits. KSO today, as always, is brought to you by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. Uh, we always appreciate their sponsorship and their support. DY, I have five questions. Are you ready? Of course. Well, good, because we're doing this. Number one, people would love to hear this. What's the latest you are hearing on K-State's vacant defensive coordinator position? I think it's going to be hired uh, from someone that's already at K-State. I think it's going to be an internal hire, uh, probably for specific names for that in the vacant linebacker coach as well. We'll probably leave that to KSO, and, and something should be on the side probably fairly soon on the details of, of those specific candidates. But in terms of the defensive coordinator hire, I think it's they've, they're have almost 100% assured to hire someone from within and make it an internal replacement. Very concise, very well stated, very good answer. I appreciate it very much. Nice work. Number two, if you were writing a commit watch piece right now for K-State football, tell me three names, roughly off the top of your head, but three names that you would put on there and why those three kids you're going to bring them up. Uh, the first would be Austin Weiner. Uh, I think that could push a little bit later than I thought it th- thought it would, but I would still put him probably in the the – one of the three most most likely to commit, and, and I think it's still going to be fairly soon. He could get beat to the punch by three other three others, of course, but he's the safe pick at this point, probably the most likely to be a wildcat out of all the names that we're probably going to share at this question. If I was going to a second, um, I think I would probably say Jalen Knoll, the receiver at Park Hill High School. I don't know that Kansas State's going to be the choice, but I think they're one of his top two or three options right now. And he's really kind of conducted himself and operated his recruitment and taken enough visits at this point in time where I think that you'll probably see him uh, make a, his decision at least before his senior season. So it could last until in, and into the summer. But I still wouldn't be shocked if, it, if he made his college choice known before uh, summer gets here. Um, and then if you're talking about a third, there's probably – a few names you would consider at this point. I think Bo Stevens, I think there's a possibility that he's off the board and commits to someone between now and let's say July. I think, I think that's probably the time frame where he, he's working at. He's the off the tackle for blue Springs. The K state really likes, I think Iowa is another top option that he's considering. Um, Braden Wood, someone that we're going to go see in Denver, in the Denver area, Boulder area, a defensive lineman, uh, probably the K state fans probably aren't, the most familiar with yet but they probably should get familiar because I think there's a possibility because he has some ties to K-State where it could come into play that he's a candidate to, you know to jump into the class at some point especially since he's going to visit in March uh, Keegan Johnson the wide receiver from Nebraska uh, can, he actually already announced the top three with Kansas State in it so uh, and then Jermaine Hamilton Jordan the linebacker from the Kansas City area he really likes K-State I think K-State's going to be one of his top two schools I don't know when he uh, could commit. I just think he's someone that probably has enough interest where it wouldn't surprise me for him to pull the trigger fairly quickly. But if we're going to settle on a third, I'd probably be the most comf- comfortable with Keegan Johnson because I think his decision is going to be it's going to happen probably by the middle of June, probably sooner. And we know Kansas State's a top choice for him. Let's stick with football recruiting in the rest of these since I have you, and this is kind of a rare opportunity. Not really taking into consideration who K-State already has committed. Of course, they're set at quarterback with Jake Rubley. That went really, really well. But tell me a position other than that one, of course, that you think K-State really needs to nail and is crucial to get right the rest of this recruiting cycle. Yeah, there's a few probably positions to consider. Quarterback was one. They've already kind of nailed that. Uh, running back, they don't need to in this class because the, the success that they've had prior. And, and wide receiver is probably a consideration. I'm not going to say wide receiver, but I think it has to be a consideration just because they didn't – necessarily have to attack it very much in the class of 2020 um so it's going to be more of an emphasis in 2021 but not enough for me to probably put it above some others and I think people think probably offensive line should be and I'm probably going to stay away from offensive line just because I thought they finished pretty well at the offensive especially the offensive tackle position in the class of 2020 that takes a little bit of the sting out of 2021 and I don't and they don't want to go overboard and, and you know 
add five high school offensive tackles within, you know, an 18 month span. I don't think that's good. Uh, but I think the positions where, I, where the three most for me would be one is actually linebacker, not just because Scotty Hazelson just left for Michigan State, but you're going to have three your four key linebackers um, that you're going to count on in 2020. That being Justin Hughes, Cody Fletcher, and Elijah Sullivan. They're all three going to graduate. And you've only added two, I think, in the last two years because Khalid Duke didn't um, end up being a linebacker. He turned to defensive end. So linebacker is going to be, have to be the one they nail. Um, I, I, I would say tight end for offensive side of the ball just because I think they really need to upgrade the quality at that position. I think Nick Lenders is going to be improved. I think Bill Swanson is going to be a good player. Um, but I think they need more than that. And going forward, they're going to need more than that because I don't know how much time Nick Lenders is going to stay at Kansas State. He did get an extra year. He's already redshirted. Um, I don't think he, even though he's going to have that potential and uh, ability to stay, I wouldn't guarantee that he stays six years. So offensively, I say tight end. Defensively, linebacker, but don't sleep on corner either because they're also going to lose Walter Neal, A.J. Parker, and Jerome McPherson all after this year too. A lot of holes to fill for sure, like there would be, of course, I guess, in any program. Number four, we've basically came out and said this or hinted at it, but just for clarity for people, when are we going to see uh, Devontae Pritchard and Dorian Stevens? You talk about linebacker, a couple of athletes who you never know could help out perhaps there. And what kind of questions do you want to ask those guys? What are we going to talk about with Dorian Stevens, Devontae Pritchard? Uh, I just no, I got those names. I thought I mixed them up, but I didn't. You know, two of the top four recruits in the state of Kansas who are already committed to Kansas State. Yeah, well, we anticipate Kansas State being, you know, the Big 12 tournament playing on that opening night Wednesday, I believe it would, is what it would be, uh, of the Big 12 tournament. So the whole crew is going to be in Kansas City. So that day we'll probably meet with Blue Valley athlete Dorian Stevens and Gardner Edgerton athlete uh, Devontae Pritchard. And that's more probably getting to know them. And you'll probably hear some of the similar questions that we asked Jake Rubley, that we asked Jaden Williams. I mean, ultimately, how close are you with, with the coaches? What coaches – are the ones that kind of spearheaded your recruitment? What really, you know, dictated that, that it go in Kansas State's way? Uh, who who's you really get along with? Whether it be the players, uh, fellow recruits, um, other coaches, and and just you know what the expectations are for them to be in Manhattan and what and what they expect when they get there, as well. So it's more of kind of getting to know them, but also probably going a little bit more in depth on the recruiting process and and, and just you know what kind of swayed Kansas State over other schools or why they chose to commit so early. Dorian Stevens was the first commit in the class. Devontae Pritchard was the second, and he almost was the first because he wanted to when they beat Oklahoma. Last but not least, again, if you're listening to this, we're either already in the car to Colorado or perhaps we've arrived there. Uh, we're looking to see certainly Braden Wood on Tuesday in Boulder. We're also we're trying to work it out with Ty Robinson on Monday here in Denver. Um, but Braden Wood specifically, earlier in the commit watch question, you mentioned him as a name that maybe could go in there. A defensive lineman, of course, without sharing everything, because I know you like to keep it for KSO, which I appreciate you do because I do too. Why is Braden Wood specifically a kid we wanted to go see? Um, why is he important perhaps to this class? And why is he a name, like you said earlier, that K-State fans may want to start familiarizing themselves with? Yeah, as I said earlier, probably start familiarizing with himself because – I think that the the momentum of his recruitment is definitely shifting in Kansas State's direction. I think there are those around him that prefer him at Kansas State, even though he has a decent offer sheet that you know has other options where he didn't have to go to Kansas State. There's other Power Five teams that would certainly take him as well. And he's a defensive tackle. He can play the three tech, and if you consider that part, him and another Denver area uh, player, Arden Walker, thinker basically the only two defensive tackles that they've offered. Now, they don't need to go crazy defensive tackle because they did add two junior college players in the, in the prior class and another high schooler. But uh, if they're really concentrating and limiting those offers at defensive tackle, I certainly think they're starting to, to feel pretty good about the ones that they have offered, and I think they have reason to feel good about it. Um, we won't get into the, the finer details of Brain Wood has you know, a handful of ties to Kansas State. And that's one where he's going to visit in March. And I think that it, uh, I'm starting to uh, approach the territory would almost be a little surprised if he didn't end up a Wildcat. So that, that that's probably why they need to familiarize and why we're trying to familiarize ourselves more with him. And then, of course, we're, we're hoping to see Ty Robinson if that shakes out. He's still in his basketball uh, playoff mode right now. He actually is a two-sport star. Not only does he have offers from Kansas State, Kansas, and other Power Five options when it comes to football, he has a Minnesota offer in basketball. So, definitely a great athlete, a dynamic athlete, and one that uh, doesn't have a lot of time on his hands. So that that could be a little tricky to, to iron out in terms of meeting him. We hope to, but if not, we we hope to maybe 
and I'm still working on some details where maybe we can get, go to Cherry Creek High School too because Kent State's actually offered three juniors at that school alone, uh, one being Arden Walker. So we're still getting out the finer details of a few things for Monday, but Tuesday morning we'll definitely see Braden Wood. Really appreciate that, Derek. You nailed those five questions. Um, we will see, of course, Braden Wood, like he said, on Tuesday. At least we'll see Devontae Pritchard, Doran Stevens this month. We are making some thoughts to perhaps go see Donovan Williams up in Lincoln. Um, we're going to continue to do this. It's something I think Derek and Flanders both really spearheaded the belief and want to do this and go see kids and see recruits. So that'll continue throughout the offseason when basketball does wrap up here soon in March and there's no football after spring football. There will be, still be stuff to follow. We'll have tons of camps to go to. That's a big, a uh, lot of fun for us. We did that last year, DY, with Flanders. A lot of camps, a lot of recruits. It'll be a really, really good time. That's going to wrap us up already today for KSO today for this Monday. If you're not a subscriber to KSO Online, you hear this pitch from us every time, and I apologize, but I don't apologize enough not to say it again. Please do consider it. Um, there's a lot of recruiting information, such far, far more than we share on these episodes that Derek keeps kind of behind the paywall on Case it Online. If you're not a subscriber to our YouTube page, that doesn't cost you anything, and we really appreciate it. There is a red subscribe button on the bottom right of your screen if you're watching it right now. You have to have a Google account, so if you don't have one of those, um, you probably need one. I mean, everyone has one in 2020. But if you don't have one, go ahead and get one, hit subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. And if nothing else, you could just tell your friends for us.